Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, entitled customer demands perfect debit card, racks up $130 in fees and faces consequences. The second story, the employee takes advantage of the opportunity and receives 33 hours of overtime for the night shift after the accident, turning troubles during off hours into profitable sleep. The third story, volunteer firefighter faces absurd rules, backstabbing, and unpaid station hours, leading to a decisive departure. Today's first story is debit cards. I work at Wood Forest National Bank. For those who don't know, it's a bank based out of Texas located primarily on the East Coast inside of Walmart. This story happened about a month ago. One of our usual entitled Karen, EK customers comes into the bank demanding we print her a new debit card because she lost her old one. We issue debit cards same day so long as they pay a debit card fee, $10 for a reprint or $15 for a new card, waived for certain accounts. A reprint was a simple task, so I print her card and send her on her way. She then walks back into the bank because the last two numbers were slightly rubbed off. This is due to how the machine prints the cards and is pretty common. EK, I want you to print this card again. Me, is it not working? EK, look at the last two numbers. Other banks don't give me cards with rubbed off numbers. Me, I'm sorry ma'am, but sometimes that happens with the machine. It rubs part of the numbers off when activating the chip. EK, I don't care, it looks terrible. Do it again. Me. Ma'am, I don't think this is a good idea. We really don't have control over how the machine. EK raising her voice. I don't care what you have to do. Just print my card again so it looks nice. She takes a pair of scissors and cuts up the card into tiny pieces in front of me. EK, print the effing card now or do I have to close my account and contact market manager's name? The market manager isn't someone you would know unless you have had a conversation with him before. It's obvious she's trying to name drop him to get me to shut up and comply. Q malicious compliance. I turn over to my manager and he gives me a nod. I then put on a devious smile and say absolutely ma'am, but to ensure this won't happen again we will need to change the numbers so I'm going to need you to sign some things. EK. See was that so hard? We then spend the next 10 minutes printing out new cards until we get one that doesn't have the numbers slightly rubbed off. Each time the card isn't to her liking, she cuts it up and says do it again. I just smile and say sorry about this let's try again. Each time, until about 8 cards later, she finally gets a card number that isn't rubbed off. EK. Finally, this card looks good, thanks. She just leaves with a smug grin thinking she won, and leaving us with her massive pile of cut-up debit cards. What we forgot to remind her of is having a completely new card generated outside of fraud or expiration costs $15 to be deducted from your account. This is made clear at account opening and since she signed off on having all these new cards printed, there was nothing she could say. Normally I try and help people avoid bank fees, but in this case, F this entitled woman. A couple days later she comes storming into the bank looking peeved. EK, WTF did you do to my account? Me, I'm sorry ma'am, but what seems to be the problem? EK, there's a bunch of debit card fees on my account. WTF did you do? Me, oh, every time you had me print a new debit card for you the other day, a $15 fee was charged to your account. The first one where you only had me reprint the card number was only $10. EK, you need to effing reverse these fees right now before I call market manager name and get you fired. At this point my manager steps in. Manager, hello ma'am, what's the issue? EK, your dumb A employee tricked me into paying over $100 worth of fees because he kept effing up my debit card. Manager, ma'am could you please not yell? Also, I was there, you demanded we print you a new debit card because you didn't like the numbers being rubbed off. We have your signature on these forms stating that you wanted these cards to be printed. I will not be reversing these fees for you. EK. Then I want to close my account. Manager. Okay, but first you need to pay off your negative account balance as well as your line of credit. EK. Just give me market manager's name, number this instant. Me. Sorry, ma'am, but we aren't at liberty to just give out his number like that. Here's the number of customer service if you'd like. This is true he's instructed us to not give his number out to any customer who asks. The only people who need his number already have it. She takes the number, screams, I'll have your jobs for this, flips us off, kicks over a chair and storms out. 
We get a call from customer care later about the incident where we explain everything and scan over all the signed debit card applications. Also, she had us print out eight brand new cards in the one reprint. That cost her about $130 in fees because she demanded a new debit card. The best part is my manager likely would have just waived the original $10 fee had she just been nice and asked. Edit. I feel like a few explanations are in order. One, when I say numbers rubbed off, I mean a bit of the last two numbers being rubbed off. You can still tell what the numbers were, but it just didn't look like a card you get from every other bank. Two, the cards were not defective. They just weren't aesthetically pleasing enough for her liking. Each card was valid. Three, yes, I did lead her to having new numbers, but that's because getting an entirely new card number requires your signature while a simple reprint does not. She's been in the bank before complaining about the bank taking money out of her account for things she didn't sign off on, like overdraft fees and new debit card fees in the past. She even tried to get one of my other coworkers fired for something similar. So to avoid this, I got her signature on the card forms so she couldn't claim we did something she didn't authorize. It was to cover my A4. Yes, she's been disclosing these fees multiple times, and upon signing two page printouts. One is the signature request, one has the fees disclosed on it. She threw away the second paper to dispute my suggestion that she should read it. All fees are disclosed multiple times. Five, I've already called my tech support about the issue months ago. They don't classify it as a reason for needing a new machine. This bank employee decides to take control of the situation and arranges an interest payment for the unpleasant customer. At first glance, it may seem that the bank's employee's reaction could be defined as dishonest or revenge. However, on closer inspection, it looks more like a response to Karen's unreasonable demands and dissatisfaction. Each time a new card is issued, there's an interest fee that she's obliged to pay. This story can serve as an example of how rules and procedures can be used to cut off unpleasant customers who try to take advantage. The bank employee manages to maintain control of the situation and pushes back on Karen's attempts to use her connections if she really knew the manager personally. At the end of the story, when Karen realizes that her actions have led to an increase in the amount on her card due to interest costs, she should realize that trying to take advantage leads to financial costs. The next story is, do nothing all night for a ton of OT? Yep, why not? Little bit of backstory, I worked at the time in an oil change place. They had recently moved managers from salary to hourly because some managers in different cities were just lying and not going to work while getting the same check every payday. And I warned them that if anything, my pay was gonna go way up because I'm here a lot more than 40 hours a week. They were good with that, they said. Well, one night I get a call at 7 p.m., two hours after close, from one of my guys who was in the shop after hours without permission and crashed into a bay door, like a garage door. All auto shops have at least a few. He got fired. That's not the MC at all, just set up. So I came in and investigated. The most relevant fact here was that he bent the door so there was a maybe four inch by four inch gap. A house cat could have squeezed through. I called our door repair guys immediately. They said their folks were on an emergency after hours call already to somewhere five hours away. They could be there in the morning. I said okay since this wasn't dangerous. The door was in a place not visible from the street. You'd have to be behind our building looking for this kind of thing to find it. Alarm still sets, motion detectors still work. Anyone that broke in through this metal door with a four inch gap would have needed tools and was gonna get in even without the gap. We don't even keep more than a hundred bucks cash around and anything expensive to steal was equipment bolted to the floor. Deal with it tomorrow, right? Obviously no. Called my boss to fill him in and he said to call the door guys. I told him I did already and tried to explain the situation. He interrupted and told me in super rude and loud words, this D-head did not like being called after work or having to do any work, ever. Just to call them and not bother him again about it. Then texted me to rudely say that I better D-well stay there until they arrive and finish the repair. So since I was single, had no plans and was now paid hourly, I clocked in the instant I arrived initially. I decided this sounded like easy money. Pulled up two comfy office chairs to make a bed slash couch, watched YouTube and did assorted internet scrolling. Slept at normal times pretty comfortably all the way to 8 a.m. They showed up around 9 and fixed the problem pretty quickly. I was already on my regularly scheduled 8 to 5 shift that day, which I finished. So now let's do the math. That overnight waiting, 7 p.m. to 8 a.m., 13 hours, all OT at time and a half. Then my normal shift, 9 hours all at time and a half. So 22 hours times 1.5 equals 33 hours of pay for doing my normal shift, plus internet scrolling and napping that was barely even an inconvenience. 
My boss sees it come payday and tries to give me a yelling over email for trying to rip off the company. See seeing all the big bosses, HR, payroll, etc. I reply to all, explain the situation, include the text screenshot. Suddenly, I'm not the one getting yelled at anymore, and I got every bit of that OT pay. An employee, instead of resenting his boss's unfair demand that he stay at work after closing hours, decides to take the initiative. Instead of performing an unpleasant task, he decides to use this time for his own benefit. It was brilliant. The long night shift, which included watching videos and surfing the internet, became an opportunity for him to earn a significant amount of money within the paid work hours. By cleverly utilizing his right to overtime and premium pay, the employee calculated that his gain from such a night shift would be impressive. As a result, he managed to convey his position, including even a screenshot of a text message from his boss, asking him to just call the repair service. This leads to the fact that the boss decided not to argue or criticize the employee anymore, but apologizes to him and recognizes his right to paid work. The third story is, you should think about what you want, okay? I used to be a firefighter for a volunteer department. The town was small and nothing happened on most days, but I was young and single and I loved the job. I showed up every single time I could. The only person who was there more than me was the chief. As many volunteer firefighters know, when grandma falls down at 3 a.m. you get one or two people. But if there's a fire, people you haven't seen in months suddenly have enough time to show up. Anyway, that department was a mess. People were always SH talking and backstabbing. Training was a joke. You were lucky to get a PowerPoint once a week. Stuff was stolen often. There was once a whole political coup for some reason. Somebody really wanted power in a small town department in the middle of nowhere. I learned it was best to just stay quiet and do my job, and that was helped when I went to night shifts at my real job. I was working 12 plus hour shifts, sometimes five or six days a week. I still showed up to every run I could, but after seven years there, I was just done with it all. Everything came to a head when I was scheduled 28 12 hour shifts out of a 30 day month. I was still the second most active member out of 30 people, but I wasn't kissing the appropriate A's, and the management kept trying to get me in trouble. They once threatened to fire me for not turning in some paperwork, and I had to point out that paperwork had been sitting in their mailbox for three days. They eventually decided to add a stupid new rule. You were now required to sit at the station for 40 unpaid hours a month. Not doing so could lead to discipline and termination. I didn't bother. I was about 24 shifts into the month and I did not care about their dumb rule, but I realized that I could make it. So I left work, grabbed a change of clothes, and I went to the department. It was about noon, which was midnight to me since I worked nights. I tried to sleep on the rock hard beds they provided. Not 30 minutes went by when the training officer kicked the door in and demanded that I get up and help with training. My role? I sat on a hose so it didn't move while somebody else practiced the pump controls. A sandbag could have done just as well. An hour later, training finished and I tried to go back to sleep. I was told off again. I ended up hiding in the TV room so I could have some peace and quiet. They found me again and wrote me up, first time in years, for what amounted to not being enthusiastic enough about the job. I endured a lecture while trying to fall asleep where I stood. I finally got to go sit down when I got a text from the boss at my real job. They wanted me to work that night and wondered if I was available. I thought, you know what, I'm available, and I left. A few days later, I got a nasty email from one of the guys who wrote me up, telling me they didn't like my attitude and that I needed to think about what I wanted. I thought about it and I realized I didn't want to deal with their SH anymore. So I wrote my resignation letter, went back to the station, gathered my personal effects, and I never went back. The story reveals a conflict between OP and the department's manager. The story reveals that a rule was adopted that required volunteers to be present in the department for 40 hours a month without pay. However, given her schedule and fatigue, she decided not to follow this rule, and rightly so. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.